This is In Character. I'm your host, Gerard Robinson, Vice President for Education at the Advanced Studies in Culture Foundation. Hello, my name is Gerard Robinson, and I am back to have a one-on-one conversation with someone who was a part of a group conversation where we talked about state education agencies, and I have Kimberly from New Jersey. Welcome back. Thank you, Gerard. Happy to be here. So when we think of state departments of education, I've had a chance to work for two in two different states. I've lived in your state of New Jersey as well. People think of bureaucrats. We think of people who push papers, who are in offices, who really have no idea what really goes on in the day-to-day lives of educators. But you actually found that not to be the case. Tell us more. Yeah, absolutely. So working for the New Jersey Department of Education really demystified a lot of the notions I had around a department and around offices and the function of a regulatory body. And so for me, what was really wonderful was working with folks who were educators, see themselves as educators and doing work on a larger scale. So taking the classroom lens and trying to apply that beyond just one district and also trying to connect so many educators. And that was really exciting. And so I really found a really fast home at the New Jersey Department of Education because there were so many people eager to work with practitioners. Across the board. So once you were inside, um, what were two things that surprised you in a good way? That you, you know, you read the org chart like we all do, but it's like, ah, I didn't expect this. Are you laughing? So you've got a couple. Yeah, no, I'm laughing because studying the organizational chart and all of the offices, you can get really lost in it. Mm-hmm. But what really surprised me and excited me was how much individuals within the department wanted to to be creative and to find new ideas and connect different stakeholders and didn't want to be this castle on the hill, um, wanted to be in schools, on the ground, doing school visits. Like I remember when I was at the department, I had so many opportunities to visit charter schools, visit districts in rural, rural, urban, suburban. I had opportunities to go to educator prep programs to interface with stakeholders that were having meetings on equity that I wouldn't necessarily had a seat at that table, but the department kind of opened that up. And and so I was really surprised at how much the department wanted to be this networking space. And that made me really happy because we in New Jersey really need that. We have 600 plus districts, which is really wild to think about. <laughs> I mean, you know, you've lived here. And, and so we're a dense state and a really diverse state. So you need a department of education that wants to connect folks and, and really bring that big New Jersey energy to schools. And so that was a really happy surprise. I think I'm going to stop there because I think that's like the number one takeaway that I took was the network that, that the department wanted to build. You talked about the diversity of the state and it really is when you hear New Jersey, you may think Newark or you may think of the capital of Trenton or uh, if you like Frank Sinatra, you're gonna think of Hoboken because they had a mayor there by that name for a very long time. But the state is also pretty rural. Yeah. And when you look at Education Week and look in uh, US News and World Report, New Jersey is always in the top 10 uh, in terms of education and how students are doing. Uh, Talk to us about how a Department of Ed has to deal with so much diversity just across the board, geographic, regional, otherwise. You know, I'm thinking about one week in particular in my sabbatical, Gerard, where I was with the commissioner, uh, Dr. Lamont Rappelet at the time, hosting an assembly at a blue ribbon school and then maybe two days prior, I was also in, I was, that was in Bergen County, then I was in Passaic County, and I was at the School of Education and Training at the JFK Complex in Patterson, doing a school visit where students were touring me around their school. And then the following week, I was at a pre-K program in Salem County in Woodstown. And, and if, if you know anything about New Jersey, those are really diverse places. And so 
even just serving that is the ability to understand the needs of those communities. And something that I think the Department of Education does really well is field work. And we have county offices of department, um, excuse me, like county DOEs, and each of those offices serve that county. And so you have points of contact and information going back and forth between the department just in terms of that county office. But also you have very particular offices. I, mean, I told you I studied this org chart, but <laughs> you have county off, you have offices in the Department of Ed that are meant to provide comprehensive support. And so depending on the needs of the school, there really is an office or a contact at the department that's either doing research or outreach or meant to be a place, right? That can connect you with similar districts who have similar needs. And so that was really exciting, but I can I remember that week distinctly because it was probably two weeks prior to this interview, it was probably two weeks before, two or three weeks before school closures and thinking about how bizarre that time was. So you have 600 plus uh, districts in your state, you have county. Um, is there a county state rep or someone who can make decisions for that county without having to get the thumbs up from? Yes, yes. Okay. So, so we have the executive county superintendent. So I live in, so Camden County is the district, is the county I teach within. So there are 38 traditional school districts, but it's like 43, 45 with the charters and Renaissance. So I'm using okay. of the yep. 21 in New Jersey, that's one. And Lavelle P. Bassett, Dr. P. Bassett is our executive county superintendent. And so she can make executive decisions. Of course, she bounces it off the state and they have kind of their hierarchy there, um, but we do have our representation. And that's been something that's been essential and critical during remote learning and all of the shifts with COVID. So uh, that's something too, I've had the unique opportunity to interface with multiple county officials in that way. This is the same county uh, that decades ago was home to Campbell Soup? Correct, it still is actually. Still is. Um, Jonathan Kozel talked about uh, Camden in his book, Savage Inequalities. Inequalities. Yeah, I, I remember I read, I read Savage Inequalities in my graduate program at Rutgers. Mm -hmm. I'm currently, what's really exciting about my work at the department is that it has come back with me uh, into the classroom and I'm working with an elementary school now in Camden City. And that wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for my work at the department. And so I think that educators across the state, whether they're administrators, building leaders, however they may see themselves, do understand if you've worked at the department, you have you have a different lens of how you approach community and networking in schools. And, and I'm really grateful for the department for giving me that access. Speaking of uh, Camden and where you are, talk to us about uh, COVID-19, how it's impacted, what's going on, and are you, is people coming back in? Is it hybrid? Is it all yeah. virtual? So I teach in a hybrid setting. I've been teaching in a hybrid setting since the beginning of the school year. And we are moving to full capacity, if you will, like phase two uh, next week, actually. And we've started doing that with our kindergarten and second grade last week. And we're kind of phasing up as we go from there. And by full capacity, it doesn't mean full day. We're still at half day schedule and modified. And I'm in a small district that are about 800 kids in the high school I teach in, but you know, this is different from district to district. So for instance, I'll use my, my partner school in Camden that I'm working with. They have been in remote learning since last March and probably won't be returning until April and as of right now. And so that partnership, it, my students read on their class Zooms. And so we have re readers and residents. And so that partnership we've built. And so it's really been this beautiful turn of how we make the most of the situation we're in. But in truth, you can, you can see the inequities, uh, as we said that the pandemic has exacerbated them, but you know, some children have not had access to being in the building, right, in school. And that has been really difficult and challenging. And so it really varies across the county uh, and I know now in New Jersey, we're gonna push to vaccinate educators as quickly as possible. So hopefully schools can return faster. Absolutely. Well, Kimberly, thank you so much for joining me again, for uh, doing a deeper dive on some of the points you discussed 
uh, in our group session. Uh, keep up the good work and I look forward to a conversation in the future. Thank you. Thank you.